This is Twit. Cloudflare had a big embarrassing outage. Um, and it was one single measly little line in a router's config file. And suddenly, Riot, GitLab, Patreon, Authy, Medium, DigitalOcean, and countless others, including somewhat ironically, Down Detector, became <laughs> unreachable and dropped off the net. Isn't so, that ironic that Down Detector was down? <laughs> down Detector went down. Yeah. You know, not their fault, of course. No. But well, last it, was, Eve, it was their fault. <laughs> not down detectors no, fault. But I mean, Cloudflare's fault. Right, 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 right. So last Friday evening, while Twitter was updating the world about its massive hack, John Graham Cumming, our friend, was describing what happened at Cloudflare. Um, I have the link to his more detailed post in the show notes. But basically, I, 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 I clipped out uh, two pieces. He said, today, a configuration error in our backbone network caused an outage for internet properties and Cloudflare services that lasted 27 minutes. We saw traffic drop by about 50% across our network because the architecture of our backbone, because of the architecture of our backbone, this outage didn't affect the entire Cloudflare network and was localized to certain geographies. The outage occurred because while working on an unrelated issue with a segment of the backbone from Newark to Chicago, our network engineering team updated the configuration on a router in Atlanta to alleviate congestion. <laughs> this configuration contained an error that caused all traffic across our backbone to be sent to Atlanta. <laughs> This quickly, and I was like, whoops, this quickly overwhelmed the Atlanta router and caused Cloudflare network locations connected to the backbone to fail. The affected locations were San Jose, Dallas, Seattle, Los Angeles, Chicago, Washington, D.C. Uh, it says Washington, comma, I guess, uh, yeah, comma, D.C., Washington, D.C., Richmond, Newark, Atlanta, London, Amsterdam, Frankfurt, Paris, Stockholm, Moscow, St. Petersburg, Sao Paulo, uh, Kurt, Kurtaba? Uh, is that a place? Yeah. Uh, Kurtaba. Yeah. Kurtaba? Kurtaba. Uh, and, oh, okay. And Porto Alegre. Other locations continued to operate normally. What other locations? Are there any other? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. You anyway, saw this beautiful uh, graphic. This is gorgeous. <laughs> I think yeah. this says it all. Yeah. That hot spot yeah. is Atlanta. The white spots yeah. where there are no traffic, those are the knocks that are down right there. Right. Boom. He says, this was not caused by an attack. Of course, there was, of course, speculation went wild as soon as Cloudflare became inaccessible. This was not caused by an attack. Oh, and, and um, Bleeping Computer was also taken down. Not oh, caused geez. by an attack or a breach of any kind. He said, we're sorry for this outage and have already made a global change to the backbone configuration that will prevent it from being able to occur again. Oh, good. But in, uh, in the posting, he did offer some interesting technical detail about their setup that I thought our, in, our listeners would find interesting. He said, Cloudflare operates a backbone between many of our data centers around the world. The backbone is a series of private lines between our data centers that we use for faster and more reliable paths between them. These links allow us to carry traffic between different data centers without going over the public internet. So, you know, what we used to call a leased line, you know, where you're actually buying probably, well, I'm sure fiber optic, some, you know, some fiber optic carriage owned by, you know, AT&T or someone, just raw transit. And there's, you know, no routers, uh, you know, in line. It's just these two points, point A and point B, are interconnected. And, in fact, it's probably a big honeycomb uh, d with direct links to, you know, all of the various uh, major uh, uh, data centers. So he, uh, he, he said, we use this, for example, to reach a website origin server sitting in New York 
carrying requests over our private backbone to both San Jose, California, as far as Frankfurt or Sao Paulo. This additional option, this additional option to avoid the public internet allows a higher quality of service as the private network can be used to avoid internet congestion points. With the backbone, we have far greater control over where and how to route internet requests and traffic than the public internet provides. And of course, we recently talked about BGP routing mistakes. They're easy to make, and when a mistake is made by an organization the size of Cloudflare, they're also hard to miss. Uh, and this was exactly that. There was some backbone congestion in their Atlanta, Georgia data center. So the team decided to remove some of Atlanta's traffic by rerouting it to other data centers on the backbone. Essentially, removing some routes that were pointing to Atlanta, it's where, where Atlanta's Atlanta's BGP was advertising a bunch of routes. They thought, okay, we're going to reduce its advertisement spread so that other routes, uh, other routers on the backbone will pick it up. But there was an unappreciated comparison in routing preference levels, which resulted in this unanticipated result. Instead of removing the Atlanta routes from the backbone, the mistake caused the Atlanta router to start leaking all BGP routes into the backbone. So Atlanta, remember this, the, the, we've talked this, about this before, the vocabulary of BGP is, and routing is weird. So they said Atlanta was inadvertently advertising itself as the proper destination for all of Cloudflare's backbone traffic. The other routers at the other data centers that received Atlanta's updated BGP table, uh, which essentially amounted to a bold come hither, they shrugged and said, okay, <laughs> and Atlanta was immediately buried and collapsed. Uh, as John put it, quote, with the routes sent out, Atlanta started attracting traffic from across the backbone. So, yep, they were... You know, embarrassed and apologetic. Mm. And uh, as we said, they already put safeguards in place so that nothing like that can happen again. Let's hope that Twitter uh, is going to do the same thing. At least probably Twitter doesn't run BGP anywhere important. Uh, no. And they and and you could just imagine. I mean, I'm sure that the, the team really knows its stuff. This is the kind of thing where just, you know, it was a 100 versus a 200 on the on, in the priority list, and you know it wasn't until it happened that someone said, uh, "What's happening?" And then they you know had to dig down and find it. The reason it took 27 minutes was that you know it wasn't obvious what the problem was. Right. And so as soon as they found it, it was like ah, oh, and then they fixed it, and then this you know the the traffic got itself cleared up. So. I have to say I'm impressed by the forthrightness that cloud I mean they're this is the code. This is the yes, error in the code. They're exactly they're actually showing the line. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's great. I you know uh, that's always that's reassuring. That's why we love them. Yeah, that's why yep. we love them. And we would love yep. John cuz he he's a real geek and he you know he understands. He gets it. Yep. Yeah. You know any outfit that puts up a wall of lava lamps. <laughs> And, their... and aims a video camera <laughs> yeah. at them as their source of entropy. <laughs> Chaos. What's not to love? Yeah, yeah. They're cool. They're really cool.